Howdy folks! I wanted to do a confirmation test for fluor fluorine or for fluorite. Uh, I've never done it before so I just wanted to see how it works. Uh, a couple sources suggest using uh, taking some of the powdered material and adding uh, about four or five times the volume of sodium metaphosphate to it, putting it in the, uh, mixing it together, putting it into the bottom of a uh, closed tube and heating it. And if there's if it's fluorite or if there's fluorine in the mineral, you'll get some hydrofluoric acid coming off, and it should etch the inside of the tube. And you, you'll also get some uh, silica that's deposited in the in the tube also uh, when you're done. So those two will indicate that you do have uh, fluorine in there. Uh, what I'm going to do is a little different because I don't have any sodium metaphosphate. Is uh, this is uh, a field guide to minerals by Poe, and. Uh, one of his tests is to uh, powder uh, of the fluorite mixed with sulfuric acid and boiled in a glass tube will etch or frost the glass surface just above the solution. So that's what I'm going to do. I have some concentrated uh, sulfuric acid. I also have uh, for my files some uh, fluorite that uh, I actually powdered up. Uh, just just to, to give you a warning, this is not a how-to video. Uh, I do not recommend doing this because hydrofluoric acid is really dangerous and heating concentrated sulfuric acid is obviously very dangerous too. Um, so this is not a, a, a how-to video. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, obviously don't try it. But, but anyways, I'm going to use some real small quantities. I'm going to use less than a mil in a small tube here of concentrated sulfuric acid. I have a very small quantity of the uh, fluorite that I ground up in the uh, mortar and pestle here. So let's give that a whirl, see what happens. I got my uh, long sleeve shirt on, a lab jacket, the gloves. I'm going to wear uh, goggles and face mask and do it in the hood. So uh, we'll make sure we're safe. I'm going to add about a mil of concentrated sulfuric acid to this test tube, or actually a little bit less. I'm going to try to be careful not to get the edges of the uh, test tube uh, wet. That way we can see if something etches. Alright, I was able to drop that in pretty pretty well. I have just a small pinch of the powdered material, not much at all. I'm going to put that in the tube and once again I'm going to try to get it straight down so I don't uh, get it on the edge of the test tube so I can look for etching a little bit more clearly. In fact I think I'm going to use a funnel. Put it down as far as I can. It's in there, so I'm going to start heating. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's actually starting to boil already. All right, that should be enough. I'm going to let that cool down and then we'll take a look at it. Just a quick look now. I don't know if you can see, but there's a, a ring there. But uh, I don't know if that's just from, from liquid or steam. But we'll, we'll see if that's uh, actually etched the glass or not. Actually, I decided to go ahead and boil it a little bit longer off camera. And uh, definitely have something going on with a, at least the coating if it's not an etching. We'll get that cleaned up and take a look at it.
All right, I cleaned up both of the test tubes that I heated with acid, uh, one with just the plain acid, one with the acid in the mineral. And I cleaned them out with a test tube brush, uh, rinsed them out really well with the deionized water so there weren't any water spots, and also uh, put some acetone in there to, to dry it out and even heated them. So they're, they're clean and dry. Uh, I'm not sure if you're gonna, how well you're going to see this on camera, but this is the tube that was just had the plain acid, and it's it's shiny and clean, and uh, doesn't look like uh, you know anything's happened to it. Uh, the second tube was the one with the mineral, and I don't know if you can see that or not, but it uh, probably from about a quarter inch up on the tube to maybe uh, three quarters of the inch up, it's it's definitely it looks like it has a uh, foggy appearance to the glass. So it looks like it did get etched. So that was definitely a positive result for the fluoride ion and for fluorite. Maybe you can see them side by side uh, and see a, a difference between the, the two. But uh, the, the, this one had the, uh, the fluoride in it. So actually that was pretty easy to do, especially having the fume hood and using the smaller uh, quantities uh, that I used. Uh, there was definitely a, a big difference between heating the plain concentrated sulfuric acid. Uh, that had larger bubbles and didn't seem to boil nearly as easily. Uh, the, the acid with the mineral added to it with the fluorite, definitely you could tell there was a reaction there. It, it boiled really fast and there were a lot of small bubbles and I could see some uh, gas being given off. So definitely a reaction going on there. Uh, I think it was a good idea to, to boil it for a couple minutes and let it react to, to make sure it uh, etched the tube so it was apparent. Uh, it's not really dark, but it is definitely apparent. You can definitely see the fogginess in the glass where it etched it. So that was definitely a, a positive indication of the fluoride ion. And uh, being fluorite, uh, that's uh, calcium fluoride. So. Uh, you would expect that to happen. So, so that's great. It was an easy test. Another, another tool in the analytical toolkit for analyzing uh, minerals. Anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, happy mineral identification.